Judas. Ah, uh, this is not something a lot of people will cover during this time period, but it is something that I think we need to take a look at. Um, first of all, some shameless plugs. Um, like, subscribe the video. You know, do all the fun stuff with that, as well as the social medias. And if you want to support us, we are on a Patreon. So let's go ahead and dive into this topic. Was Judas evil or good? I think there's a lot more to Judas than what we normally think of. He has been labeled the betrayer, and for some good reason. But I think there was something more... At least in his mindset, I don't think he was deciding that he was going to do this absolute betrayal. I think he had a much more innocent um, point of view. So let's let's examine some of the things that we know about Judas. We know that he was taking care of the disciples' money, that he was the money man who was managing it. Um, so he would have had his hands on coffers. He was also expecting Jesus to be the Messiah as the Jews were expecting. He was expecting Jesus to come in as a champion who kicked out the evil Romans, established his kingdom, and ruled forever, and that his 12 disciples, who were the closest to him, would have positions in that kingdom. According to maybe their contributions or their valor in the upcoming war. But something really dawned, would have dawned on uh, Judas as Passover approached, the final Passover that they were going to do with Jesus. Jesus kept talking about him dying. That's not something... A victorious conqueror who has not yet conquered anything should be talking about being handed over and put to death no 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 by no means would that even happen because remember Judas and the other disciples um, really did gamble everything on Jesus in such they believed fully that he was a teacher he was the Messiah who was coming so they fully, they fully believed that, enough to abandon their careers and abandon their loved ones in order to pursue the kingdom of God. So at least at one point, Judas was trying to do good. But as such as, such as it happens in many of our lives, when things don't go the way we think they should go, we decide that maybe we should start controlling it a bit maybe we should be the ones to make those decisions maybe we should be the ones to make sure things keep on track you know like just control it a little bit i think that's what really started to slip up judas i think it was the control and i think we'll go we'll go through his actions leading up and even after betrayal the betrayal of jesus in order to examine what his mindset might have been what he was thinking what he was desiring um with that in mind do remember that according to judas judas's concept and even many of the other disciples um jesus was coming to conquer he was coming to take back the kingdom from the usurpers who were Rome currently. So, when they're sitting there at the Passover and Jesus is talking about someone betraying him, Jesus was probably already thinking about this, was already thinking of the concept of turning him over, not to the Romans. And that's the critical thing that really lends itself to at least in my mind, to there some, being something more going on. He didn't take Jesus and turn him over to the authorities as far as Rome is, the legal authorities, these usurpers. He took Jesus and turned him over to the religious leaders, to the Jewish religious leaders. The people, he, in his mind, were godly men. Still, 
and that they were still to pursue this. And as soon as they saw that he was the Messiah, then obviously they'd follow him and then Jesus would get off this whole I gotta die thing and get back on track with, you know, ruling and conquering, right? Because that's where Jesus' mindset was. And he was also on the financial end. He was taking care of all the money and he knew exactly where they were financially. Um, there were some questions I've heard. Some people wonder if he was doing a little embezzling, actually. But I don't know if there's any evidence of that. Other than him just not wanting to waste money. But then again, he could have just been frugal. So, that's a fun word. I don't get used that one very much. Frugal. But, hey, it works. Um, so, we know that his intent was to turn Jesus over to the Pharisees, not the Romans. So, the question is... Why for so little? Remember that Judas has basically bet his entire life on Jesus. Everything that he's worked for, everything that he has accomplished in his life, he really laid it down on the line in order to follow Jesus, as did all the other disciples. But for the same amount that you could buy one slave, he was willing to turn over the man he has followed for years. That doesn't seem right. Um, Judas might have been using it just in his mindset. If he was thinking, okay, I'm going to turn him over to the Pharisees. The Pharisees are going to give him a slap on the wrist, wake him up. He's going to talk to the Pharisees. He's going to prove who he is. Then we can move together against this evil Roman threat. We can go conquer this. And, yeah, we'll take the money and invest in some weapons because we kind of need that for you know the rebellion and stuff so that could have well have been his mindset um when he's saying hey i'll turn jesus over to you guys he's not going to be executed and no uh, at this point i don't think that it even crossed judas's mind that the pharisees weren't going to turn him over to the romans the pharisees were going to take him and charge him with basically the worst possible crimes they could imagine in order to get him executed. So we know what happens. Jesus, of course, is arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane and then is taken and put on trial. And as he is put on trial, Judas is like, what's going on? This is not what I bought into. And you can see that in his reaction where he goes and confronts the Pharisees. It's not what he bought into. It's not what he thought. This was not his plan. His plan has gone awry. Just like our plans a lot of times. When we take control and have to lead our own lives, we find very quickly that we are out of control. That there are things that we did not expect. Judas was not expecting the Pharisees to do what they did. Judas was not expecting that. And even when um, he was leading them there and they had the guards with them. Those were temple guards, not Roman guards. Which I've seen some artwork where it's like, uh, no, those were temple guards. They were Jews. It was still all the Jewish concept in his mind that he was just turning them over to his other Jews here in order to wake him up so we can get moving with this rebellion. And then they turned him over to the Romans. Yeah. And then he was sentenced to crucifixion. Which in Judas's mind is horrendous. This was absolute failure on his plan. And in this case, he really sees what he has done in his betrayal. And then as you know, afterwards, he goes and hangs himself. Takes some money, buys a field, and then hangs himself. We get a couple of accounts of how Judas dies. We get the first account where he's talking about, oh, he hung himself in this field. And then others say that he tripped, he fell, and burst open. Um, 
those are actually the same account. There are two different places in the Bible that we see them, but they're really the same event. Um, after being hung for a few days, you're kind of bloated, and, and if you got cut down, you pop. And out comes confetti! Well, not really. <laughs> no, it's not confetti! Woo! But, so we do have two different accounts, and if you look at them together, they do make sense. As being from <laughs> a couple of the others. From two different witnesses of the same event, you'll get two different stories of what we see there. But Judas, I think Judas's story really shows a lot. Definitely when you take it and look at Peter's um, story as well. So when you examine them side by side, both of them, Peter also betrayed Jesus. Um, you can try to argue not to the same extent, but he kind of did. When Jesus was being put on trial, he said, I don't know who he is. I got nothing to do with him. He's nothing to me. And absolutely rejected Jesus. But this is where the difference comes in. And it really shows two different paths that we all can take. Because we're all the same as Jesus. We've all betrayed Jesus. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all made mistakes. We all have our sins that we're struggling with and that we stumble with. So, in the same way, we've all betrayed him. The question is, which path are you going to take? Are you going to take Judas's route, which he tried to control the situation. It failed. He tried to control it again by going and confronting the Pharisees again. And then once that all fails, he took the punishment upon himself and hung himself. Or are we going to take Peter's route? Or yes, we did make a mistake. Yes, we did absolutely reject Jesus Christ. We turned our backs on him in that moment of his greatest need. But we repented of it and came back to him. That's the choice. Either you can repent, come back to him, let him pay for your betrayal, even of him. Or you can choose to take the penalty upon yourself. That's the true story here with uh, Judas and Peter. True differences between two paths. Either you pay for your sins, or Jesus takes it upon him on the cross and you accept what he's already done for you that is what Easter is about after all it really is and even this small part of that story that doesn't get focused on much still shows it so let's go ahead and wrap up um, thank you guys so much for joining. Like, subscribe, all those fun things. I'll be back on Sunday on Easter with a couple of videos. Um, one to help you guys get started on any sort of video editing or um, streaming. If you guys want to get into that, I'll give you guys some tricks that I've learned, some tips, what software I use, yada, yada, yada in order to give you guys a jump start and hopefully get you much further along than when I was when I started. Then you don't have as many stupid mistakes as I did. Quite a few of them. Um, after that, we'll also be talking about sin, dam sin, damnation, and hell. And finally, we'll be talking about God's master plan as it all comes together. So thank you, and let's go ahead and end with prayer. Lord of heaven and earth, holy is your name. Thank you for this opportunity to celebrate your resurrection, to recognize what you have done for us, the pain, the suffering, your death. Understand that it was for us and that we have a choice either to follow you or to forsake you, either to follow the path of Peter or the path of Judas. 
Please guide us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.